Um, so today we start our Lent study. So for the next five weeks, we won't be meeting on Easter, but for the next five weeks, we will be looking at a study on conversations, which means you're going to have to talk. <laughs> which may, you may, may, may enjoy it, may not. It's okay if you don't. Um, you can participate as much or as little as you would like, but a bulk of our time together is going to be talking with each other. So we're going to be forming groups in a little bit um, to think about different parts of conversations. And to do that, we're going to be looking at the same piece of scripture that we're also looking at in our sermons as well. So this will give you a little bit of a, a precursor looking at what we're going to be reading in our um, worship service. So... Today, we are looking at this topic of subtext, and to do that, we're going to be opening with prayer, considering this topic of conversation and what is subtext. Uh, we're going to read our scripture, and then we're going to spend a good amount of time in conversations with a number of different props. So I may have some of you move around um, in a little bit to do that, so don't get too comfortable uh, where you are. Anybody feeling like reading our prayer for the day, which comes from uh, UMC? Um, wait, let's see. Can you see that? Well, thanks. I'll strengthen my commitment to hear not just the words that others speak to me today, but to hear how you are to work in their lives guide me to hear your truth and where your spirit is leading me and others by your grace empower me to take a posture of listening care and compassion may i hear what you are trying to teach me amen amen and thank you so much lisa all right so to start off i want you to just name one person with whom you've had a meaningful conversation. And I'm going to write those names down as we go. Or it can be, you don't have to say the name. If It can be just a friend if you'd rather, or a grandparent, or a parent, or whatever you'd like. So at some point in time. Yes, Julie has. Julie has. We haven't seen you. Look at that, Julie. <laughs> Love it. Joel. Joel. My uh, grandmother. Your, gr your grandmother? And then what was the other? Somebody said a uh, spouse. Yes. Uh, Holly. Um, or, or teacher? Yeah. Say teacher. Uh, Victor. Friend. Victor. Daughter. Daughter. Yeah, I'm putting in Russell, my son. Even though he's four, he has some quite a lot to say. <laughs> Paul Koski. Paul Koski. Oh, I'm Paul's gonna be so happy that he said that. <laughs> Janet. Janet. Daniel. Daniel. Might his last name be Vigilante? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. All right. Any other names? All right. Well, this is a pretty good list. So, as you can see, we have a number of people who we already have had meaningful conversations with. And so, I hope that. Today and in the coming weeks, we will also have some meaningful conversations, and maybe we'll have more people to add to the list as well. So what did stand out about that conversation? So that conversation that you had with that person, or it could be a number of different conversations, what stood out about it? Very humorous. Very humorous. Yeah. 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 Humorable. Take us through a lot, right? Yeah. 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 Honest. Honest. Yeah. We need honesty for sure. Open ended. Open ended. Yeah. It just keeps going, right? It's, this is not for once and for all. It's, it's going. Yeah. It was hopeful. 
hopeful. Oh, that's good. Encouraging. Encouraging. Sharing something very important to that person. Mm, yeah, that maybe you wouldn't share with somebody else, but Absolutely. you're like, this person, I can trust them. Right. Kathy, were you? Well, that was the same thing. Someone just stopped me and said something I had given to someone else some years ago mm. had meant a lot and had just been passed on. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. Over listening. Listening. Mm, listening. That is the key word. Thank you for bringing that up for, for today, especially with subtext. Yes. All right. Why are conversations important? Why don't we just seal up our lips and never say anything? <laughs> why do we why do we choose to talk to other people? Connections. Connections, yes. Have to communicate in some way. Yeah. Yeah, there's so yeah, I mean if we sit together, you know. Yeah, with words or you know, I mean you can also have conversations through creative means as well, you know, but to have some means of, of being together where we're able to communicate, yeah. You know. Being helpful to one another. Being helpful, yeah. Yeah, it's a give and take, right? You know, it's, it's. I mean, it's different if it's your therapist or student minister, for example, where you're listening more and talking less, but to be able to go back. Do we have, oh, we have, Two of our Lindas on here. Which <laughs> Linda was going to say something? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Linda Sarita. Uh, well, they say there's really an epidemic of loneliness yes. that kills more people than really just about any disease. Yeah. And uh, conversation really fights that. Yeah, was it, was it just last week that Daniel yeah. mentioned the one and two? People was it under what was the age? Do anybody remember what he said? Under a certain age, one and two people are lonely. Yeah, lonely. yeah they, or was it everyone? Yeah. Everyone. everyone. Every with everyone, yeah. Great Britain has like a minister who is out to fight loneliness among just the other there. Yeah. yeah. And there's a campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Conversations are important to at least help yeah. that. Yeah. It's how we get to know each other. It's how we get to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you and I sit together, even if we sit together for 50 years, probably not going to learn anything about each other. <laughs> Unless by osmosis. <laughs> you can't yeah. work together. We can't communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I believe God speaks to me through other people. Mm, yes. Absolutely. We, we can see the face of God through each other's words and, and through each other's faces. Yeah, that's interesting. I always believe you're guarding angels yeah. to the other person. Mm, yeah. So often. Uh, yeah. We learn that others share our concerns, but also have different perspectives and concerns. Yes. Yeah, and, and and that's good sometimes to have you know this alternative viewpoint when we're saying, well, this is what's going on here. It is, and this is the answer. But then somebody else saying, oh, is it? You know, maybe there's something more to it. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Paul. Yeah. I'm here in the outfield. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't hear what saying, so I'm repeating it. Just Conversations convey feelings, thoughts, and beliefs. Mm, feelings, thoughts, and beliefs. Big topics, right? Big and even big subtext, which is what we're getting into. Yeah. So what is this subtext? What is subtext? I have a little definition here. So subtext, according to the Gotham Writers Program, which I think is their definition, is the meaning beneath the dialogue. So all these things that we're talking about, what is underneath? What the speaker really means, even though they're not saying it directly. So it's not something you know, I'm telling you, I like dogs. 
Well, that's good, but what is there behind that statement? As humans, we often don't articulate our thoughts exactly. It's called the hidden agenda. The hidden agenda. Oh, I like that. That's a great thought. Yes. Yeah. There's more back there. There's some reason why I'm coming to you that I may not, I may not ever say, and you may not even ever figure it out, but there's some other reason behind that. So why don't we articulate exactly what we mean? What are some of the reasons that we don't say what we really mean when we're talking with someone? We don't hurt their feelings, right? We're too nice to the whole sort of um, Christian kindness, you know, perspective of, you know, we don't want to hurt somebody. Yeah, I'm being compassionate. Yeah. You may not know. We may not know. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what it is that we even want to tell them. We're afraid to let people know who we really are. Mm, yes. There's a fear in that, right? You know, that that's inside me. I don't want to share that little part of me with any random person. Yeah. We're afraid of being criticized for what we said. Absolutely. To be criticized. I mean, that's really hurtful. You know, if, if we say something that really matters to us, what if they don't accept it? And what if they say, oh, that's wrong, or I don't agree with you? That can be really hurtful. I avoid an argument. You want to avoid it. Avoid an argument, yeah, avoidance, absolutely, yeah. And I think also if you give an opinion when you articulate, uh -huh. they may not agree with that. Yeah, and that's really yeah. hard. Yeah, that's hard if they don't agree. That means that conversation's going to be a lot longer <laughs> if they don't agree. If someone disagrees, it's like, oh, yeah, me too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or they, yeah, yeah, you may lose a friend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, sometimes we don't know what we mean. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We may say one thing when in fact we mean something else. I think most of the time when we're speaking in direct conversation with people, mm -hmm. we're looking for connection and commonality. We might be trying to nudge them one way or another, like away from, but we're mostly looking for commonality. Yeah. It seems to be the opposite when people converse online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. They're trying That's to it. find the differences often or <laughs> even. I think sometimes it's fear that mm -hmm. if you talk about it, it makes it more real. Yeah, yeah, it's easier to just brush it under the rug and say, "I don't want to." I don't want to even think about it. You know, especially if it's something really hard. You know, something that's really painful for us. All right, so there's two ways to interpret. Scripture, words, or conversations, or at least this is one um, interpretation, which in my sermon, I was like, oh, I wish I just had a screen just for this one thing. Um, when we look at a text, so when we look at a piece of scripture, which is what we're going to do momentarily, there's two different ways that you can look at it. You can either look at it as, here's the text, here's what's being said, here's it, and here's it is, and the reality. So here's, here's the facts. This is what, you know, I like dogs. Ah, the reality is that dogs are important to you. You like them. The subtext, though, is what is meant, which is what the gospel is most interested in. So the subtext is that I'm grieving about my dog that I just lost. That's what I really meant when I said that. And that's the truth, that I feel love for that being that is no longer here. So these are the, so we are going to be thinking about the second one. While we still don't want to, we still want to acknowledge the reality. We want to acknowledge the facts. We want to look at the meaning behind that reality. Audrey, are you yes. suggesting that when Jesus is talking, he is a subtext, or is that the people are talking with him? Both. Both that Jesus had some subtext, that there was something more there, as well as the people. And I would argue maybe even Jesus had more subtext going on because he had more information than the people with whom he was speaking. I actually have a question. Yeah. When when uh, God said to uh, Abraham, right, mm -hmm. that he had to give up his first son, mm -hmm. or Sarah said he had to give up the first son, mm -hmm. and he didn't agree with that. Mm -hmm. So the question is, he was, he was obeying what God said, right? Yeah. Even though he had a difference of opinion. Yeah. So how does that get interpreted? 
how does that get interpreted? So what is, are you asking, what is the, the meaning? personal belief versus well, God tells you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's hard. You know, when those have butt heads, you know, it's God is telling you one thing, but you're like, no, that's not what I want to do. Or that's not what I feel called to do. That's when there's a conflict, right? With, right. with what God is. is yeah. And it's really hard. Right. It's and yeah. Yeah. And, and for, for us, you know, we don't get the God coming to us directly oh, no. and saying, it doesn't say, do this. do this, you know, it's even more, we have to interpret what we feel God is pushing us right. towards. It's more subtle. It's almost like a subtext. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a even deeper underneath subtext. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we're going to look at our scripture now. So we have about four paragraphs. Um, anybody up for some reading? And can can you all see them? Do I need to pull it up a little bit? As he was sitting down on the journey, a man came up and knelt before him and asked him. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I've kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Are you thinking for me? Anybody else? And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it? How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God? It's easier for a king to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. God, for God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So, oh, you already got it, Kathy Jeff. I meant to pop these out beforehand, but we'll just do it right now. So, if you could pass these back, thank you. Everybody get through a scripture, and there are pens and highlighters, if you prefer highlighters, um, on the table. So, if you can grab one, I think I have some more um, back there as well. <laughs> Yeah, we may need it. Maybe if you want to do All right, so everybody have a writing utensil and a scripture. <laughs> And my two for those online, I emailed you um, scripture, uh, but if you also just want to look it up, it's Mark 10, verses 17 through 31. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whichever you prefer. Uh, uh, uh. Fabulous. 
All right. So we just read the scripture, but now I want you to take just a couple minutes to skim over the scripture again to yourself. And I want you to underline any objects that you hear or key words. You can denote those differently if you want. You can have a squiggly line for a, um, the objects and a straight line for the keywords, whatever you want. Um, underline all the objects and keywords that you notice. We'll just take a couple minutes for that. All right, as you finish that up, we have another, another to ourselves exercise before we get to our conversation. Now I want you to look back through the text again and circle where you think the subtext is. Which areas do you think the subtext is that you can, um, you can also write words that you think would um, best describe what that subtext is in each of the paragraphs or sentences, whatever you prefer. Um, but what is the subtext in, in this scripture? We'll take just a couple more minutes for that. All right, we're going to have more time to be thinking about this concept of, of subtext and where that subtext might be. But to start us out, um, I want you to name some of those keywords that you underlined or circled for us. So what are some of the keywords that you Commandments. Think? What? Commandments. 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 Yeah. Journey. What? Well, Journey. Journey. That's my star word for this year, so I'm really noticing that. <laughs> Treasure. Treasure. Shocked and grieving. Shocked and grieving. Yeah, that one really, that one really sucks to me too. Yeah. Peter. Peter. I say that. His name. I didn't mm -hmm. stood out. Yeah. Yeah. Perplexed, astounded. Perplexed is standing, yeah. Possessions. Possessions, yep. Fields with persecutions. Fields with fields with persecutions, yeah. Eternal life. Mm. <clears throat> first and last. The first and last. Well, this is a great list already. So we have commandments, journey, treasure, shocked and grieving, Peter, perplexed, astounded, possessions, fields with persecutions, eternal life, the first and last. Enter the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, yeah. So we have a lot going on here, just from these few words that we're naming now um, for us to think about in our conversation. So I have several prompts for us, um, but I'm going to ask that everyone gets in groups of five. And we also have a couple of our folks online, so if somebody could be a group of three, and I'm gonna unplug this and have, have my computer here for our Linda's. Um, but if you can get in groups of five in, in circles, um, that would be fabulous. So we'll take a minute. All right. So we're going to see how much we can get to. Um, but this is our first couple of prompts. So we'll spend about five or six minutes talking about the first one. Um, and this is diving right into the subtext. So start by naming what you think is the major subtext theme of this text. What is it? Why do you think it is? And then what words did you write down? Why do you think this is part of the subtext? So we'll spend a few minutes talking about this before we jump into our next prompts. And if you have any questions or if you hate this prompt, we can move on to another <laughs> All right, everyone. But, you know. 
So we're going to take and some time to reflect a little bit before we go. And I know you solved all the world's problems in that period of time. So thank you. <laughs> so what is the major subtext of the scripture? What did you all figure out? What is, what's going on here? There's a lot of questions back here. I'm not sure we heard a lot of <laughs> A lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, questions are good. Questions are good. I like questions. What else is bad? I think the two major subtexts that I came up with any were many possessions and the last will be first. Many possessions and the last will be first. Yeah. Well, that's certainly the last for this section. It then goes on um, to say a few more things, but then we kind of, Jesus stops, stops it right there, and then they head up, keep going on to Jerusalem. Yeah. But the last will be first is something that Jesus talks about a lot in many parts of the uh, the, the New Testament. Yeah. Um, and yet it's a concept that we don't always get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How do we come last? <laughs> How do we become last? Yeah, good question. Good question. Race to be last? I'm going to race to be last. <laughs> What other um, observations or reflections or questions came out of your conversations? We had a couple different groups. Um, I wish we had all day to talk to each other. But what, what were some, some reflections from your conversations that you had? Well, I think that, that our discussion had to do with uh, just how liberal these requirements are. Yeah. Uh, do we actually follow them to the T? Mm -hmm. Should we live in a tent? Yeah. <laughs> or, or what? Yeah. And, uh, I think we, we're still struggling for what that, excuse me, I'm still struggling with what that means for me. Yeah. Except to know that there's more to life than riches. Mm -hmm. There's more to life than good food, yeah. going out to a restaurant. Yeah. So what does that mean? Yeah. And it, is it simply thoughts mm -hmm. or is it action? Yeah. To what extent, if it's action, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is really hard to figure out, you know, how literally or not literally do we take our tests, you know, and, and that's the decision for each of us to make. It's really There's also another theme in here, which uh, we didn't discuss, but just popped in my head. To some extent, the first shall be last and last shall be first. These are revolutionary words. Mm -hmm. These these are challenging words. Yeah. This means overthrow the society mm -hmm. and make those of us who have nothing in charge. Yeah. And what a mess that is. Yeah. Does he yeah. does he really mean that? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of what happens in this world, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess the most revolution you you simply lags first. And the historical consequence is you then need another revolution because those new first are as bad as the old first. Yeah, or they become the same. Yeah, yeah. Every, we're all in the same same yeah. pot together. Yeah. Any other questions or reflections that, that came from your conversation? I guess the thing if you're if you're by yourself and you just think of yourself mm -hmm. and you don't have either friendship or conversation, then it's kind of a lonely life. Yeah. And and is that something you want to do or is there a better life? Mm -hmm. And I think that there is a better life if yeah. you formulate this extension of your own thoughts. And to others, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It definitely helps, right? With loneliness, it may not answer everything, it won't answer everything, but it will help. Yeah, I think you're talking about teamwork. Teamwork, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're all we're all in this together, yeah. yeah Marty, um, you know, the, the man, the way he was talking about and breathe, mm -hmm. yeah, and we talked about the willingness to do this, not that 
we necessarily should leave our spouse and our children and our homes and the life that we're doing. But the willingness to do it, and obviously the man was so tied to his possession that he was shocked and grieved that Jesus would even suggest such a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so the willingness to give up and to help others and uh, we sort of talked about that. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I think that willingness, you know, is hard for any of us to come to when we're like, well, I don't know where that is that you're telling me to go. Or, you know, or that sounds like a really scary place. Or, you know, for those of us who like to plan and be safe, that sounds a little too much. I don't know if I can handle that, you know, and, and so to be able to give everything up, you know, to then, or even part of it, is is hard for us to kind of fathom. Yeah. And then part of being in school, we should be giving up something. Yeah, that's that's part of that. Yeah, is for us to, you know, but even you know, even if we're not giving up, what are we doing? You know, how are we nurturing our faith further? So even if we don't choose to give something up, what are we doing to deepen our faith to have kind of further conversation with God? Yeah. I, I think you know there's other religious <clears throat> times so. though. Ramadan, either year or it's coming up. Mm -hmm. And they fast and they pray. Mm -hmm. And it's to be and to recognize mm -hmm. God and to be closer to God. Mm -hmm. So I think not only Christian faith, but other faiths have similar goals. Mm -hmm. And how do they do that? When they pray, they go to the mosque and they pray. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, fast during the day, by the morning they can do things and evening they can do things. Mm -hmm. So it's like living your life religiously, yeah. but on the other hand, you're still living life that's surrounding you. Yeah, you're exactly. Integrated. The balance, right? You know, and figuring out how to. Okay. So the, how to well, one thing that popped up is, you know, wealthy people that get divorced, they don't want to give up their money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They want to keep those possessions. Yeah. They want to share. Yeah. It's a terrible example, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, right, one I of the things... Oh, yeah. Yeah. You go ahead and pick up your children. <laughs> and yeah, Sam, you can be our, la our last one. Yes. Yeah, and just a little quick. I think that, that trying to understand the nature of the sacrifice that a person has gone through uh, mm -hmm. in order to... Um, uh, to make those kind of changes in their life, uh, a, a very rich person who <clears throat> you know can give away eighty percent of their fortune, but you but have an abundance that is so great that it actually makes no material difference in mm -hmm. their life. Uh, uh, I'm glad that they have done what they've done, but but I think that pales in comparison to a person who. Um, uh, tries to to help provide for others uh, at the absolute expense of their own life or lifestyle. And, yeah, and I, I think that idea of sacrifice is an important metric or, mm -hmm. or measuring uh, approach that that we ought to have in our head when we think about this. Yeah, you're definitely hitting on you know the woman with the two coins giving up everything and her her willingness to do that compared to. Most of us who also want to play it safe, you know, and take care of ourselves, which is important too. So, yeah, yeah. All right, we are. At, I see Daniel, and he's like telling me I need to like get over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I can keep talking forever on this. Yeah.